Welcome to Youth Sunday School. Today is the 10th and final part of our Fruits of the Spirit series, and today's topic is self-control. Let's go ahead and read the Galatians scripture. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against things like this. That's from Galatians 5, 22. Self-control, huh? I don't know about you, but I feel like self-control can be kind of a sensitive subject. I think that it's used a lot in our society, especially revolving around like body image and food, or how, quote-unquote, lazy or unproductive you are versus being productive. And that can make talking about self-control difficult because, because we don't want to be clobbered over the head with ideas about self-control every time we misstep or don't do something that we were wanting to do. Another part of why self-control can be a difficult topic is because a lot of people are neurodivergent. Um, a lot of times struggling with impulse control and things like that. And so it can be hard to be told to control yourself when sometimes your brain chemistry literally won't let you. Um, and so we're going to be careful of that today as well while we talk about self-control. Looking at psychology today's definition of self-control, it says self-control or the ability to manage one's impulses, emotions, and behaviors to achieve long-term goals is what separates humans from the rest of the animal kingdom. Self-control is primarily rooted in the prefrontal cortex, the planning, problem-solving, and decision-making center of the brain, which is significantly larger in humans than other, in other mammals. The richness of nerve conditions in the prefrontal cortex enables people to plan, evaluate alternative actions, and ideally avoid doing things they'll later regret, rather than immediately respond to every impulse as it arises. This happens really often. What we're going to find today is that self-control as we know it today in our society is not the, necessarily the exact same thing as what it means in scripture in the Bible. That happens a lot. So, with that said, why not look at the original Greek? We find that the Greek word used in the Fruits of the Spirit that's translated as self-control is enkrateia. And it means mastery, self-control. And it comes from the word enkrates. I, I hope I'm pronouncing all of these right. Again, I studied Hebrew, not Greek, in seminary. So, enkrates. Let's go look up what that means. Definition. Strong. Robust. Having power over. Possessed of a thing. Mastering. Controlling. Curbing. Restraining. A controlling oneself. Temperate. Continent. Continent. What if... What if the true meaning of self-control is is being continent, as in not peeing your pants. Fruit of the Spirit. Don't pee-pee or poo-poo yourself. And so having looked at those original words, um, there are a lot of scholars that say that self-control, it might be better translated as self-governance or self-mastery. As in, not so much our modern idea of self-control as in, like, limiting yourself and punishing yourself and keeping yourself from enjoying things. Not so much as just being, just making sure, like, you are driving the car that is you and that there's nothing else in charge of that. And I think the biggest thing that gets in the way of us trying to practice our self-control or our self-governance or self-mastery is shame. I think a lot of times when we fall short of our own expectations, whether we, we don't do the thing that we were supposed to do, or we don't meet a goal in time because we procrastinated and did other things, um, all of us have been there, and all of us feel bad when it happens. But the key word is shame. Making sure that our guilt over not meeting our goals doesn't turn into shame. So, I've heard it said that the difference between guilt and shame, guilt is saying, I did something bad, and shame is saying, I am something bad. And so, guilt, we can acknowledge when we make mistakes, but that doesn't mean that we are bad. 
Um, whereas shame, when we make a mistake, we feel like we are a mistake. And we tend to beat ourselves up and, you know, put ourselves down, give ourselves really awful self-talk inside of our heads. I'm sure we have all said mean things to ourselves within our own heads. And shame doesn't help you grow. Um, shame helps no one grow. You can't punish yourself into feeling better or doing better. Um, that only makes you feel worse. So I think the way to try and exercise self-control, self-governance, self-mastery, is not to try and shame yourself into doing better, but to put your energy and your effort into being kind and peaceful and creating good things. Making sure to encourage yourself to meet your goals instead of trying to beat yourself into meeting your goals. The only thing making yourself feel bad does is make you feel bad. Whereas if you come from a place of self-love and you encourage yourself into meeting your goals, it's a lot easier to work on getting there because you don't feel bad in the process. Something to consider. But the important thing as far as self-control goes is I think how we treat others. It's one thing to not shame or punish yourself into like doing what you want to do for yourself. It's another thing to keep yourself from being cruel or mean or violent, god forbid, um, with other people because they've made you upset. And so I think the biggest part of self-control is being able to choose how you react based on the feelings that you feel. Um, self-control, it doesn't mean that you control what emotions you have because really that's, that's not possible. What is possible is to acknowledge how you're feeling and decide how you're going to act based on how you're feeling. I think every time we have the option to lash out at somebody or stay peaceful is a choice. And so I think the best way to exercise self-control and the best way to put your energy into self-control is to be kind with others and be peaceful with others and choose to use your words rather than hit people. That's kind of a first grade lesson, but, you know, it helps us to review it every now and then. The biggest thing that I want you to take out of this lesson about self-control is that shame helps no one grow. Just keep repeating that to yourself. Shame helps no one grow. You can't beat yourself into feeling better or doing better. Um, you need to encourage yourself and not use shame. Put your energy into being kind and being peaceful and creating good things. Because the world needs some good things. Bye!